You stop in front of a clothing display in the women's department. Three mannequins stand arranged in odd poses. Are we supposed to dress them? I think we are. And I think the security guard is here, so that sucks. I'll take the overalls. Fitting room, let's go in there. You push your way through racks upon racks of clothes toward the fitting room. You're gripped with apprehension as you enter the fitting rooms. All three stalls shut. You peek underneath each door just in case something is lying in wait to attack. You don't see anything suspicious, but that doesn't mean you're safe. Yeah, I know, because the security guard's right there. The door opens easily, revealing the fitting room beyond. Take the red dress. I have eight pages of items now. Take the receipt. Take the jeans. Take the green dress. Mirror. You check your reflection in the mirror. This time it's not trying to kill you. You look, in a word, tired. Deep bags hanging beneath your eyes and your hair is a mess. The weight of the afternoon sells across your shoulders and you feel much heavier. Bench. The bench just sit and wait while people are in the fitting rooms. Wait, no, 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 no! I went back. Oh, but... We're fine here, okay? I'll save. So we can go to the right. Okay, so this is correct. Towards the shoe department. <sighs> oh my god. The red heels, the Brannock. You've always won one of these as a kid. They look so cool. You take the Brannock device and slip it into your bag. Scoop up the slippers. You take the sneakers. You fold the boots carefully and tuck them away. M shoes. Looking for anything of note, you find nothing. There's some good deals on shoes going on. Oh crap, I think he's behind us. You can see his reflection. Anything else here? Okay. Oh my god! Leave me alone! He wasn't here when Cronby was here. Okay, so now we're supposed to dress these things, I guess. I don't know with what. You resist an urge to put the boots on and strut through the room. Take! It's a mannequin. The store hangs clothes on these to show them off. Reach up to take the mannequin and immediately realize something's not right. Its torso, where you grabbed it, swivels around 180 degrees, loosening your grip. You look up to see its hands coming down at the base of your neck, which hurts considerably. The mannequin wraps its spindly limbs around your body and begins to squeeze and never stops that you're aware of. Was that seriously a death? Can I look at my phone? It's out of battery?! It ran out really fast! Register. You step closer to the cash register. Okay. Scale. The scale weighs your bag. The more candy inside the bag, the heavier it will be. First you weigh the candy, then you pay that amount of money. Then the register prints out a receipt. Speaking of receipts, I did pick up a receipt. This thing? Oh! It's a Cavity City receipt. This is a receipt from Cavity City you found lying around. Looks like someone bought $7.30 worth of candy. So I need to have $7.30 worth of candy to get into the bookstore. Okay, so... The candy makes it a little sticky. Okay. So... I don't... You pour several beans into the candy bag. So you just hit take on the... I don't understand. Okay. Cause like I kept using on... Okay. That's not enough. Take. 
Uh, we need quite a bit, I think. Sugar caps. $3.20. Alright, so I've figured out how much each individual type of candy weighs. There are 12 of them, and they all weigh something different. Uh, between 0.5 and uh, one, oh, sorry, 4.5 in terms of dollar amounts, sorry. So we're trying to get $7.30. I think I've figured it out. So we're gonna take two jelly beans. They're a dollar and 70 cents each. So now we should have $3 and 40 cents. We're trying to get to 7.30. So the sugar caps are a dollar each. So I'm gonna take three of those. Now we have $6.40, uh, which is what we had before, but I didn't know that milk balls are 90 cents, so we'll take one of those. And now we should have $7.30 and be able to open the door. There we go. The scale sinks further into the counter with a click. A seemingly solid wall of the case door slides open, revealing a doorway. So I'm sure there are other ways to get that $7.30, but that seems to be the most direct route. Uh, anyway. Are you terrified yet? By the way, the gummy worms are at $4.50 each. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and save. I also got an achievement called Are You Terrified Yet? The passage leads into the bookstore where Slappy awaits. A tangible dread spills out the opening. Stealing your nerves, you press on to the bookstore and whatever awaits beyond. The bookstore is bathed in darkness. There's a sense of absence that your mind races to fill. A number of Goosebumps books lie discarded in a pile on the floor. Books, and only books, are arranged on the shelves. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Shadows hang from every surface, a perfect hiding place for every nightmare you've ever had. The figure on the floor looks like a ventriloquist puppet. Is it Slappy? No, this puppet has different hair and everything. Where's Slappy? It could be Mr. Wood. If Slappy's not here, he could be anywhere. This decoy had you completely <laughs> fooled. You're not Stein! What do you think you're doing here? Right, my Slappy voice has regressed through this playthrough. Uh... Bold. I've come to put an end to this. I'm afraid you're jumping the gun a little bit. R.L. Stein's the only person who can stop me, and even then. Uh, you're wrong, and I'll prove it by putting an end to your schemes. Kid, you need my book to do that, and you don't got it. Otherwise, you wouldn't let me do this. <laughs> With impossible speed, Slappy lunges for your throat. His tiny wooden fingers clack together as he ushers you to an eternal rest. Wow, he killed me. All right, uh, I need your book. Wait, I think... So I'm not actually ready to face slappy yet because I have to the power got cut so I guess I can call R.L. Stein now I don't know we'll see I'll save here it's a shame that I that I got killed there is the, the security cameras off so I can call I don't know what he goes by. Goulberg? Call. What? But the camera's off! The camera's off! How did you see me? Well, he's over there. Still there, my god. Oh, 
Okay, so like, camera. The security camera is aimed right at the phone. Oh no, the red light's still on. I still need to figure out how to turn that off then. Something chalky is spread along the floor, a uh, floor, revealing two sets of footprints. Something chalky. Hmm. like chalky jewelry. Do I crush it? Two sets of footprints. So, the, okay, so that means that one of them is safe. I guess not. Well, it's two sets of footprints, but there's three feet. Three, three pairs of feet, I should say. What? You carefully lift the mannequin, disassemble it, and place each limb in your backpack. And by the way, I, I, I have 81 items. 81. I feel like that's a bit much. Stores hang clothes on see what they look like, okay? So like, what do I put on it? Do I distract the security guard with it? Uh. Oh, I think I know what I do. Come on. I think I go back to the massage place. And I think I put that mannequin in the in front of the camera so I can distract it. In order for me to call Arl Stein, maybe. My god! He's eating a donut? Okay, so like. Where's the camera? Okay. Use here. You assemble the mannequin in the big empty place on the floor. Okay, so like now we dress it up? I mean, I don't know. What do we dress it up like? We just gotta make it look like a person, right? Uh. We make it look like this person! I just put it together. So, okay, incident report. Female, green hair, red dress, and heels. Green hair. Did you see green hair? I didn't see any. Ooh. Oh my god. And what is that? Hat? This? Gently reach around the mannequin and clasp the jewelry. It looks good. So is that... is that it? Let me look at the incident report one more time. Female, green hair, red dress, heels. Okay. So I mean, I'm guessing... I think it's funny that we put the shoplifter right next to the facelifter, but... 
The man can set you, sneak away and hide. Sure enough, after a few minutes, the security guard rushes past. Success, that should keep him busy for a while. Now you're free to explore. Achievement unlocked, the monster who cried girl. Which is a reference to the Goosebump book, uh, The Girl Who Cried Monster. Okay, so, Goldberg, memorize. You pick up the phone and hold it to your ear, nothing. You need to feed coins into the slot. Oh my god. How many quarters do I have? Someone picks up. After a long silence, they speak with obvious impatience. Yes? Oh uh, yes, this is John. I'm looking for R.L. Stein. Another pause, longer this time. Never heard of him. He's an author, you explain. He wrote those Goosebumps books everyone likes. Everyone likes them, he asks. So they're good? You find them scary? The man at the other end of the line seems to know more about Goosebumps than he let on. They're the scariest, you lay it on thick, hoping your hunch about the number was correct. My favorite. Oh, uh, hold on. There's wrestling on the other end. Someone here wants to talk to you. This is R.L. Stein, master of horror, says an identical sounding voice. You're John, was it? It's definitely been R.L. Stein the entire call. That's right. Sorry, sir, but we don't have a lot of time. Slappy is here and... Slappy, why didn't you say so? He's serious. How'd he get free? Never mind. Where are you? Uh, the town center Galleria. You wonder if he'll need the address. I... Okay, good. Now listen. You hear a car door open and shut on the other end. You must keep Slappy distracted. Do you understand? It's important. The car starts. Do whatever it takes to keep him busy. You can do this, John. After a beat, he adds, I'll be there as soon as possible. R.L. Stein hangs up abruptly. The line goes dead. Achievement unlocked. It came from Ohio, which is the title of his autobiography. And uh, Goosebumps artist Tim Jacobus, however you pronounce his last name, he has a similar one called... Uh, I believe it came from Illinois, something like that. I only read it came from Ohio. What am I doing here? I need to go back. I think I just talked to Slappy now. Uh, but I gotta like keep him talking. I think that's the deal. We'll see. Okay, so let's uh, save here. Yes. Okay, let's do this. It's not Slappy. We know it's not. I want to see... <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it. What? Who are you? <laughs> okay, don't give name. I'm the kid who's going to stop you once and for all. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you. What's your plan? How are you going to stop me? <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure I'll think of something. Now, kid, you won't. Wanna know how I know that? Snark. Because you're a know-it-all bully? There's a reason for that, you know. Because my plan is foolproof. Okay. There's nothing you or anyone else can do to stop me. Suggest someone. Not even Arl Stein? I bet he could put an end to this. Not this time. This whole scenario is a trap. Ready to snap shut around him once he shows up. Uh... Stick up for sign, but a bluff a plan? Let's see. I'm gonna bluff a plan. So you thought, but I've got the manuscript for Night of the Living Dummy right here. Your book, and it's time for you to go home. Yeah, that's my book, huh? You really mean that? Let's be wishy-washy. I mean, maybe it's not your best, but only because there are so many great slappy tales, it's impossible to choose. That's true, there are three Night of the Living Dummy books, there's also Bride of the Living Dummy and Slappy's Nightmare, which is like, one of the weirdest ones. And I think there's a couple other ones from uh, the new Horrorland series. Yeah, okay, well no argument there, you're a real chatty kid, you know that? Let's be, let's be tough. For what it's worth, I've been trying to talk you to death, but I guess it's not working. Get a new writer, kid. You're not as clever as you think. I am clever. The only writer I need is standing right behind you. What? Where? Nobody's there. 
You should worry less about who isn't behind me and more about who's in front of you. <laughs> Come on! To illustrate his point, Slappy charges towards you. Fight back. You stand your ground, bring your arms forward, ready for attack. You aren't sure how to fight an evil dummy, but what choice do you have? Just as Slappy reaches striking distance, a voice booms through the store and stops the puppet in his tracks. Not so fast. Is that Jack, was that Jack Black's voice from the movie? What? But how? Sean filled me in on your little plan. It's impressive, but unfortunately not impressive enough. No, it's too early. Nothing's ready yet. You, you gotta give me a redo. You've done more than enough damage for one day, Slappy. It's time to go back in the book. No, you can't do this. You created me. Why do that just to hide me away? Like some mistake. I am not a mistake. My books were meant to entertain kids. That's what you monsters are for. Getting really, uh... Okay. The only mistake was letting you out into the world where you could hurt people. You'll regret this, Papa. Next time I won't be playing a game. Next time, Slappy will be the puppet master. Shut up and get in the book. Whoa. That was crazy. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Not the not the living dummy's night and danger time. Y you're R.L. Stein, the one and only. Thanks for distracting Slappy. Why does R.L. Stein look so much younger here? Oh, you were listening. Had to make an entrance. Good writing is all about timing, and it's time we put these monsters away for good. Every store R.L. Stein types comes to life, so he keeps them locked inside special manuscripts. But Slappy had gotten loose and released the rest of the monsters as well. Welcome to Dead House. The abominable snowman of Pasadena. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. It took most of the evening, but after he trapped the final ghoul, it was time to say goodbye. Thanks again for your help, but I must be going. My daughter and I need to reach Madison by Friday. Daughter? Madison? Like, in Delaware? Madison. I said nothing. Forget everything you heard. Time to go. I guess that's a tie-in with the movie? Hey, Mom. Sorry it's so late. Chad and I are about to head home. Oh, you bet you were. You get back here this minute. Uh, we had the craziest day. You wouldn't believe. Save it. I don't want excuses. I want to know what on earth you did to the house. I mean, honestly, John, I expect this kind of thing from Chad, but my goodness. Something, something. Everything's on the floor. You left the tr fridge open? I can't even talk about upstairs. I'm so angry. Just wait until your father gets home. We're going to have a serious talk about video game privileges. That's always the worst discussion. And that's the end! So yeah, not worth 20 bucks. But... An interesting little game, it had a lot of references. It didn't... It didn't quite do enough for me, but... I mean... There was so much opportunity... You know, to have... So many different enemies, and like... I mean, I figured out about halfway through that the nine pages worth of items, like a lot of them were just to pick up. I guess that maybe there's a achie an achievement for- Written by Tom Hewlett! Written by Tom Hewlett! He's the guy who worked on the recent Silent Hill games, like Homecoming. I did not see that coming. I would have never guessed that. Wow. Anyway, uh, yeah, I needed, needed some more gameplay. I mean, it was basically like a, you know, one of those, you know, mobile, like, hidden object games. You guys know what I'm talking about? And, like, I mean, whatever. I mean, the puzzles were all right, but it wasn't long enough, honestly, and, uh, the puzzles were really cryptic. Like, you had to kind of know something about the Goosebumps universe to solve some of them, like, with the prune juice, and uh, with um, the beast from the east, and uh, I'm trying to think, like there weren't, there just weren't enough like monsters from the books. Like I was expecting more. Like we had the beast from the east, we had Slappy, we had uh, the the plant guy from Stay Out of the Basement. You uh, had Aunt Dahlia from Prune Juice or whatever. I can't. I always forget that one. 
And you had um, Fifi from Don't Feed the Vampire, the Give Yourself Goosebumps book. Uh, you had Cornby from Deep in the Jungle of Doom, another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. I didn't really understand understand that. It just like like a lot of the iconic villains weren't in this one, like you know, like the Praying Mantis from Shocker on Shock Street, or like uh, the Lawn Gnomes made like a cameo, I guess. I just I, I I feel like I feel like maybe they didn't get the rights to a lot of those characters, like and maybe that's why they didn't Yeah, that's uh Mr. Wood, aka Wally, I think. Slappy's brother. Anyway, uh and like the sponge didn't do anything. The gruel. I was expecting it to do something, but you just had it in your inventory. Maybe there's some interaction. I feel like I inter I missed out on some interactions. Cause like, on Steam there's a ton of achievements for this game. Like a lot. And I didn't hit near all of them. Like, we didn't get into the janitor's shed for some reason. I don't know why. Uh I feel like like using the hat on a mezo. Like, that was a timed thing that I just, I didn't have the hat at the time, so I didn't do it. Like, um, I'm trying to think of what else. It seemed like there was, there was just some stuff that I, I didn't do. So, I, this isn't a, a complete playthrough, I guess, but... Like, some of the achievements, I'm not really sure how you get them. So, anyway, uh, yeah, but that, those are my thoughts on the game. I think for something called Goosebumps the Game... It, it, sh it should be more complete. I mean, I, I, I liked it just because it kind of brought me back to my childhood and all that stuff, but... I mean, really, I, I guess I kind of expected more, especially for 20 bucks. You know, you kind of expect a, at least a longer game. And I don't like reducing games to, you know, how many hours did I get out of this? Because that's not... You know, I don't feel like that's an accurate... Um, gauge of quality like for example the beginner's guide is a fantastic game that's only like an hour and a half and it's like 10 bucks but I I had no complaints you know I I really enjoyed it with this it's like you know like eh, like I don't know four or five hours worth of gameplay for 20 bucks but like it's just not it, it, it's what gameplay the hours are comprised of you know what I mean so anyway yeah underwhelming but I'm glad I played it because yeah, it was nice. It was a nice little break. It was it was much more lighthearted than the the games that I've been playing lately. A lot of dark, depressing stuff. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys later. Think critically.